Hi kiddos, welcome back to Nature Studies. Today, we are going to start learning about our first biome. So if you remember last week, we made the first page in our new book about ecosystems and biomes. And if you didn't do that, that's fine. You can always go back and find that video or you can just jump in where we are now. Whether you did it or not, let's do a quick recap to remember what these words are all about. So ecosystems are places where all the organisms, all the living things, work together to stay alive. And that could be something as small as a puddle and as large as the ocean. And then biomes is the name given by scientists who looked out around the world and said, hmm, in these places, similar plants grow, similar animals live, let's give them all a name. And that's where biomes come from, okay? And then in each of these ecosystems, each of these biomes, you have these three things. The first is producers, and those are your plants, and they take the energy from the sun and the nutrients from the soil and the nutrients from the air and they convert it into glucose or sugar for energy. And that's energy not only for themselves, but also for the people who eat them or animals called consumers. Okay, so consumers are your animals who get their energy from other things. So it might be a rabbit or a turtle or an elephant who eats the vegetation and gets energy from that. Or it could be a lion who eats another consumer and gets an energy from that. So consumers get their energy from somewhere else, either each other or producers. And then eventually in the world, wild, those consumers will die and their bodies will start to break back down into nutrients of the earth. And the things that help that happen are decomposers like a mushroom or a bacteria or an earthworm or a snail and they take the consumers who've died and put them back as nutrients in the soil so they can be used by producers to start all over again, okay? We are going to jump in today with our first biome. And this biome is the coldest one and it's called a tundra. The word tundra comes from a Finnish word, tinturi, okay? And that means a treeless plain. Treeless means without trees, no trees growing. Plain means a flat open space although you'll find out it can be on top of a mountain as well. So there are two kinds of tundra, the Arctic tundra and the Alpine tundra. We'll talk about both quickly. The Arctic tundra, you need to think about the Arctic, like the North Pole, the northernmost part of the earth. Okay, it is very cold there. If you think about the coldest day in Montana, like 30 below, that's how cold it is there in the winter all the time. And then the warmest temperatures in the Arctic tundra get up to about 40 or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where we've been in Montana for the last couple of weeks. So if you can imagine, that's the warmest it ever gets there, okay? There's also not a lot of precipitation in the tundra. So in a year, if you think of our ruler, 12 inches, they get six to 10 inches a year of, of moisture. That's not a lot. So then there aren't a lot of nutrients, not a lot of things grow, although some do, and there's still some wildlife. And then their growing season there, meaning how long it takes for things to grow, how long they have to grow. In Montana, we have a short one. My husband and I have been talking about what we can plant this summer. We have to be careful because Montana gets warm and it has a nice growing season, but it's not a long one. In the tundra, it's even shorter. It's only a couple of months. So plants only have those couple of months to grow. Okay, so this is the tundra, and then there's this really cool thing that happens. It's so cold there that there's a layer underneath, it's not right at the top, it's a little bit underneath, that will never ever thaw out and become unfrozen, and that's called permafrost. So that layer will stay frozen all the time. And then what happens is, if this was my permafrost, and I have this layer up here that melts, you get the water that just sits there because it can't sink into the soil. So then you end up with bogs or marshes, which are really mushy places with water in them. Okay, so that's what the tundra will look like in the warm season. So that's the Arctic tundra. The Alpine tundra is on the tops of mountains, which if you look at them, there will be a tree line where the trees stop growing. And anything above that is considered Alpine tundra because the trees can't grow there, although they still have some wildlife that can live in those tundras. Okay, I'm going to read you a quick little story I found. Now I didn't have a book about this, but I found one and it's a silly story and you can really listen for how the creatures of the tundra work together and the way they do in the story is very silly. All right, so this is called Beyond Penguins and Polar Bears. Near the top of the world is a land called Tundra. 
The tundra is flat and has no trees. It is covered by snow and ice most of the year. So if you look, this orange place is the tundra. In the spring, the snow and ice melt. Beneath the ground, the soil stays frozen. Remember, that's permafrost. The ground gets very soggy. It is a marsh. So if you look carefully, you can see there's water just sitting there and it will not seep into the ground because of that permafrost. Small yellow flowers grow from the cold, wet ground. They are called marsh marigolds. And these reminded me of daffodils, but if you look, they don't have the bell shape in the middle, okay? Flies hide in the flowers. They soak up the sun's energy and get warm. The flies fly from flower to flower. They help the flowers make seeds. Caribou eat the flowers. The caribou also give the plants the nutrients they need to grow. Are you ready for this part? Mother flies lay their eggs inside the caribou's nose. It is warm there. The young flies eat and grow. The young flies get bigger. A chew! The caribou sneezes. The flies land on the ground. Soon they will be adults. There's our caribou who we can imagine just sneezed out some flies. Gross. And then our last page says, these plants and animals need each other. Can you think of others? Okay, so you can see that's a simple story, but it shows us how all the things in the tundra, all the organisms work together to keep each other alive. All right, now you are going to get out a white piece of paper. And if you would, please turn it portrait style. So remember that means in this direction, long side standing up so that it will fit into your folder when we're all done with this, okay? Now I have some pictures to show you before I show you how you're going to make your page. These are some animals that live in the tundra. Okay, here are like a wild yak, there's a polar bear, there is a caribou, some people call them reindeer, there is an elk, there's a hare, there's a fox. And if you notice these guys especially, their fur is white because of the place they live, okay? And then if you look down here, they also show some of the ocean animals that live in the Arctic, some whales, seals, walruses, guys like that. There's also little squirrels and voles who are like mice without the big long tail, okay? And then fish and birds also live there. The birds migrate though, depending on the weather. So, oh, and then in the alpine, this is cool. Elk and mountain goats and sheep live in the, the alpine tundra. Okay, so we are going to add some of these guys to our tundra picture. So if you look, I wrote tundra nice and fancy at the top. You could do cursive letters, you could do bubble letters, you could do decorated letters. I'm not too worried about it, but it needs to say tundra. Okay, and then I'll show you my picture that I made. So what I started by doing was making some wavy lines, not to show water, but to show the different layers of liquid sitting on top of the tundra or snow, okay? So you've got these layers of snow and liquid, and then I added in some of my favorites. I liked the little white hair, although I gave him really big ears. So shape-wise, you would do a circle and an oval, then give him his little feet and tail and his stretchy ears. Then I made a polar bear, and I made a big polar bear. He doesn't look very fierce, he looks cuddly. So I did an oval body, a circle head, and then his little feet and ears. He's one of the main predators in the tundra. And then back here, I put my caribou. And for the caribou, I did an oval body, and then I did kind of like a bubble L for a neck. And then the main part for your little caribou is antlers, okay? And then if you look down here, I drew the straight line, and I wrote the word permafrost, because that's a really important part of the tundra that we need to remember, is that in this place, that layer of soil will never ever thaw out and be unfrozen. So you need to put your permafrost, and then I drew a bunch of snowflakes in the sky, to show that it is cold there.